Mike Fierre at beautiful Santa Anita getting set for Breeders' Cup 2023. The DRF race of the day for Thursday, November the 2nd. There is Thursday racing at the Great Race Place and Santa Anita's seventh race is our race of the day. Let's take a look at this field. We're going down the hill at about six and a half furlongs. It is a nice allowance race for Calbred Phillies. It's a non-winners of one other then. And I have to admit, Mike, when going over this field, I thought this was a very competitive group and I won't be surprised if there's a tepid favorite at post time, maybe the three golden again cutting back in distance. I think it's possible that horse goes favorite. I mean, there are more questions, I thought, than answers in this race, Dan. It kind of feels like several different horses could win here if they get the right trip in the race. I also didn't necessarily feel like this pace had to be that fast, so maybe that would help some of the horses who want to be forward in this race. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector, Mike, and I think it is one of the big questions of this race because the four song of shadows is going to show speed in here, but the key is yeah. the five diamonds, Danzy. Diamonds Danzig is a fast horse. The problem is sometimes she just doesn't get out of the gate. Yeah, it's a question uh, how good she is as well, Dan. I mean, she does have speed, though. She can make the lead in this race. Only one turf star in her career so far. She won it. It was a wire-to-wire -wire victory. It was going five furlongs. She could easily make the lead here. The four should be forward, also one for one on turf, going five furlongs. But she didn't She didn't go to the lead that day. She just set a perfect trip in behind, the, in behind the pace. Now, a horse that's trying turf for the first time is at least in very good form. That's the number one, Hot Rod Mama, who's beaten condition claimers from off the pace in her last two races. Turf, of course, is a big yes. question mark. Her sire, Gem Heist, hasn't had many turf horses. I'd like to see a little bit more turf in this pedigree. It's a wait and see approach, even at a price. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with all that stuff. I mean, she should be a big price in this race. She looks a little bit cheap on dirt, although she has won two in a row on that surface. So maybe she comes into this in good form, but she's moving way up in class. She's switching surfaces and she doesn't have a huge turf pedigree. The two Don't You Forget might have had a little bit of an excuse last time out, turning yeah. back off a couple of mile races down to a three quarter mile sprint. And in the early part of the race, it looked like this trip was gonna work out yep. just fine, but it sure didn't in the stretch. Yeah, it had a huge excuse last time and I think you could easily go back pull that replay and make the argument that if she gets through on the rail there in the upper stretch she probably wins that race she was very unlucky in there um, she has competitive speed figures she is best sprinting I think that's pretty clear from her past performances um, she makes a lot of sense in this race and with your free formulator uh, ra uh, race of the day past performances all you have to do is click on the short comment to see what Mike's talking about that's the trip that this horse earned the three is golden again I generally like turnbacks going down the hill I yeah. think it's been a powerful angle over the years. This is a horse that's in a very consistent form. It sees she's there or thereabouts in just about every race. Yep. I guess my concern is she kind of had an interesting trip. For, I thought it for the most part it was good. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I'll agree with you though that she's in really good form coming into this day. She's hit the board in seven straight races going a mile. As you mentioned, turning back going down the hill could actually be an advantage. And it's worth noting they turned this filly back to sprint in January, and she won that race too. So we know she can be effective sprinting if she gets the right trip in this race. While she cuts back, Song of Shadows stretches out in distance. Yeah. She has won three of her last four starts. And as Mike mentioned, uh, this is a horse that has a good amount of early speed. In the form she's in right now, I think you have to respect her, especially since last time, uh, two starts back on turf, she raided, she yeah. finished. That is a powerful, powerful weapon to have in her hip pocket. I thought she looked really good winning that turf debut uh, a, a couple starts back then. She did get a perfect trip in that race, but she actually really ran through this stretch too. She's obviously really improved since the trainer changed to Steve Miotti. I mean, she's three for four for this trainer. She's handled dirt, she's handled turf. She could really fall, even if she's not on the lead, she could fall into a great trip here. When Diamonds Danzig, the number five, leaves the gate, she is a little rocket ship, as we saw in her one and only turf start going five eighths. She went right to the front she kind of set a moderate pace yeah. that day but she was able to sprint on home and most importantly showed she likes grass they've run yeah. her on dirt in her last few races she's shown speed in one the other two the brakes weren't there I get concerned when they start breaking slow. I agree with that. And listen, she's one for one on turf. Maybe this is just her surface and getting back to turf will be a big deal for her. But that win was wire to wire, not that fast a pace, going five furlongs. And it didn't come back particularly fast either, Dan. I, mean, I feel like she's moving way up in class here and she's got to get six and a half. And an early pace battle can certainly work against yeah. her. Roman Empress, the number six, a horse moving from dirt to turf. She does have one prior turf start. It was a long time ago, yep. and she didn't run particularly nope. well. No, she didn't run well in that race. She's three for 26 overall. She's pretty cheap on dirt, moving way up in class. I thought she was hard to make a case for. If this pace does get hot up front, keep an eye on the seven. Yeah. Sensible move rallying from the back of the pack. This is another horse that's been competing exclusively in routes. And I just think 
maybe when watching her finish her last two races, she's a late running sprinter at heart. That's a, a, an interesting way to look at her. We'll see if it all works out for her. I do think she's going to need a little help oh, yeah. if she's going to get there in this race. Dan, cutting back, they have sprinted her on twice a couple of times in the past. She's 0 for 2 in those races. Um, I do think her overall form makes her a contender in here, but she's going to need the right trip. Queen of Pompeii is a late running sprinter. Yeah. They've tried to stretch her out and she got a little bit rank and headstrong and showed speed going a mile, two starts back. They cut her back to a sprint. She came with a good run. Yeah. She just missed in a similar spot. Why can't she do that again? I think maybe she needs to take a slight step forward, but this race is so competitive. A slight step forward, yeah. if she drifts from that four to one morning yeah. line, she's fair odds. Yeah, another horse who I do think is better sprinting. They did turn her back last time. She just missed. The pro only real small issue I have with her, Dan, is that's the race that the two, don't you forget, was in. And I still feel like that horse was going to win that day if she got a better trip. So I kind of preferred the two out of there. But I do think this, the eight could be a factor in this race. Before we get to our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. It's Breeders' Cup week. We've got wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Check out Mike Welsh's clock reports. We're going to have an international report with Marcus Hirsch and Steve Anderson. Brad Free is going to be here. This is his neck of the woods. He'll talk about the Breeders' Cup with Andy Beyer on a DRF webinar, special webinar on Wednesday. Uh, let's take a look at our top picks for our Thursday race of the day. Mike Beer, where are you going? I'm going to take that trip horse from yeah. that. Most start to end the two, don't you forget. I'm going to put that horse on top. I was sort of torn between the two and the three. The three cutting back, I think, makes sense in this race, too. I'm, I'm going two, three. The angle for me is the cutback with the three because we know that route to sprint patterns worked for her in the past. And I think she's a better horse now yeah. than she was when she made that route to sprint move. So she could, should get some pace. Golden again for me. Mike's going with the two. It's the DRF race of the day. Good luck.